Yeah, Nick, lovely to see you. Uh, Nick, do you think Rishi could have done with speaking to Dave before making that <laughs> statement yesterday? Well, well, I have to tell you, um, I thought I had a bit of a tough time with Rishi with my interview this morning. <laughs> then I met Dave, the weatherman, um, who I, I, I wouldn't have wanted to swap places with you two. Let's put it like that. But, um, yes, I spoke with the Prime Minister. He was determined to get some messages out. Actually, I think I was spoken at by the Prime Minister, who's probably ah. more more accurately. But he's in full election mode, Ben. Cat, Sonia, he's out there. He's going to get his messages out every opportunity he gets. Uh, and he sees that on LBC. I think we've got a little, uh, a couple of little clips of your, okay. your interview with him, so let's hear what the Prime Minister uh, said at you. Do you regret doing it in the rain, as it were? <laughs> I'm not going to deny it, that it was, uh, it was a bit wet. Well, wh but you know why what? didn't you have a plan for something uh, you inside? Know I'm not, you know what, I'm not a fair-weather politician, Nick. I, I just... believe very strongly in the traditions of our country, and when you're making a statement of that magnitude as Prime Minister, I believe in just doing it in the traditional way, come rain and shine, in front of the steps of Downing Street. I mean, it was very much that Dunkirk spirit, brollies up, let's get well, on with it. But there was no brolly. No. I mean, that's the interesting thing, isn't it? Are we talking well, more about why he did it and how he did it than actually what he was saying? Well, here's the debate, and let's go round the table now. Um, and I said you're a man with a plan, so where was your plan for inclement weather? Where was plan B? But here's a fact. Do you have someone standing, a man or woman with an umbrella, because then the headline is Wally with a brolly? Yep. Do you build an awning, which looks kind of weird, or do you be very British, as we've all done at summer parties and barbecues and children's christenings? You just stand there and get soaking wet. I And we debated this with my uh, listeners today, Ben Gat. So, sorry, uh, Sonia. I think, actually, bizarre as it looks, I think he called it right. I think he looks stupid under an umbrella. An awning looks faintly ridiculous. What say you three? Sonia? If I was an advisor working in Number 10, I might have looked at the weather forecast and thought, oh, there's 80% chance of heavy rain this afternoon and the forecast is dry for tomorrow. Why not do it tomorrow instead? I think that's what I would have done, but maybe that was just too simple for them. But is it loaded? Is there some ulterior motive to it, do you think, at all? It doesn't make sense to me. I mean, it just... It, it, maybe they thought that it was going to make him look like somebody... You know, he brazened it out well in that answer to Nick, didn't he? He said, I'm not a fair-weather politician. I think the issue is, is that political journalists love a good metaphor. And what better metaphor is there than the Prime Minister saying, vote for me, I'm launching a general election, and literally there is rain dripping off his suit, dripping off his hair. But then it went to the next level and you started to hear the strains of things can only get better and it slightly became comedic. Yeah, it was extremely unfortunate to hear the 1997 okay. Labour campaign anthem. And, I mean, to be fair to them, it's sort of people's right to protest. It's a well-known protester. I mean, you know, there's not much that they could do about it once they decided to do it on that day and yeah. he was set up. But, again, it's a kind of thing where really careful stage management by a political party, by an events team that's thinking about optics. They might have thought about timing the event differently um, when there hadn't been a head of speculation building up all morning. Yeah. You know, so protesters didn't have time to get into place. So I think there are things um, that they could have done to avoid the situation, but it just looked really and unfortunate. They, uh, haven't the they got a very expensive press room inside number 10 that was set up specifically for moments like this, so the press can be there, he can make a statement and it's in a controlled environment. Because as Sonia was saying, the, the noise from the end of number 10 has become a, a popular way of protesting. Yeah. And of course, when you want to get your message out, and it's such an important one, we've all been waiting for him to announce this election, you kind of want it to go without people being distracted, don't you? Yes, it wasn't very good, was it, to the streams of things can only get wetter that we tried to hear that we tried to hear the problem. Yes, there is a room. You're all three of you are absolutely correct. But I'm struggling, Ben, you might be able to I can't think of the last time a PM did that significant announcement that he, she is going to my recollection, and I'm really racing. I, they've always done it outside, Ben. Right. I, can't, I cannot... Mm. Thatcher, Brown... I, I, I mean, of course you can do it inside. You, you can do it in your bath if you want to. No problem. But, but I well, he virtually did do it in the bath. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but precedent <laughs> sort of... <laughs>